Little by little, we are now starting to trace back the origins of the coup against the United States. And make no mistake, that is exactly what is happening. There is a coup to change the world. Uh, and that is not an overstatement. I, told, I showed you a couple of weeks ago uh, how a think tank, the Brookings Institute, was involved with Christopher Steele, the author of the Steele dossier that led to the impeachment charges and, and everything else that we have suffered through for the last four years. We showed you how a primary source was used to smear the Trump campaign, and that primary source was a drunken Russian that got all of his information literally from his drinking buddies during late-night boozing parties. It was all a crock. None of it had any substance to it at all. But that's how most opposition research operations usually run. That part of it is not unusual. The part that is unusual is political operation, uh, opposition research is usually never used by officials of the United States government to try to destroy a president or a candidate. It's not further used to then discredit a sitting elected president. But that's exactly what happened. And it was happening from the inside of the Obama administration. Now, the question remains, how did the political opposition research go from Hillary Clinton's campaign to the FBI and to the CIA all the way up to Obama's cabinet? Well, more information came out this week. Uh, Stephen Shiraj, uh, he is a former White House congressional and State Department official who dropped a bomb over the weekend. Stephen Shiraj is... Um, is a guy who was on the um, election team of Romney uh, for a while. He advised Mitt Romney in 2008. Well, he was back at Cambridge getting his PhD. Now, people in the former Obama administration, in the State Department and everywhere else, are trying to figure out how they're going to deal with everything that has been uh, revealed. He revealed over the weekend the entire Russian collusion narrative, the investigation, all of it, would have never happened if not for a conference that he organized at the University of Cambridge back in 2016. I read his, uh, I read his, his story this weekend, and it is filled with, filled with a kind of a, oh, crap, I think this started with me. The title of the conference was called, quote, 2016's Race to Change the World. I want you to think about that. With everything that is going on, the race to change the world. I've told you for 15 years that there were people that just like the Fabian Society in the, in the teens, the 19s, uh, were looking at changing the world through World War I, people were designing the same kind of thing now. Well, here's the conference. The theme was how the upcoming election had significant implications on the trajectory of the world and something that the old guard was getting seriously worried about all over the world. Remember, Brexit was also happening at the same time. Donald Trump was was suggesting something radically different and it scared the hell out of the policymakers that had been guiding global affairs since the cold war all of a sudden this guy who doesn't care about what has been built has his own ideas and isn't going to listen to all of the people that are sitting around advising him who have advised all the other presidents he's not going to listen to them donald trump was a bull in a china shop. So Shiraj, this um, State Department, former State Department official, um, he was at Cambridge to finish his PhD. His professor and mentor was a man that might sound familiar. His name is Stephen Halper. Halper has been identified as the person the FBI deputized to spy on the Trump campaign. But he says none of this would have happened if it wasn't for his little conference in the UK back in 2016. 
Shiraj invited Carter Page to that seminar. And at first, Halper was annoyed. Why even bother bringing somebody in the tr from the Trump campaign? He's never going to win. That's what their thinking was back then. But Halper changed his tune after his friend, former MI6 director, Richard Dearlove, arrived at the conference. Suddenly, Halper and Dearlove became incredibly interested in Carter Page. They spoke to him about what Donald Trump presidency might look like. And this is where I believe the coup against Trump started to take real shape. Seven days after the conference, Christopher Steele provided a new report to the Clinton campaign. And there, for the very first time, was Carter Page. He was central, now debunked, but he was central to that case, the Russian conspiracy theories. And wouldn't you know it, Steele was one of Richard Dearlove's former agents at MI6. So uh, Stefan or Stephen uh, Halper would l later be used by the FBI to spy on the Trump campaign. His longtime FBI handler, Steve Soma, was quickly reassigned directly to the investigation. So now all of the pieces are starting to fall in line. Now we're starting to attach names. This is how the opposition research became injected into the highest echelons of the U.S. government. We now have all of these pieces coming together. The Trump campaign was a clear and present danger because... They weren't going to, they would kick the hornet's nest. Whether they knew it, whether Trump knew it or not, what Trump was going to do, he was going to stumble into all of the goings-on of the State Department and the Obama administration, and he would stop it. That was a danger. And the biggest, his biggest crime was proposing a new way to do things. He had to be stopped. And that's why the Obama administration got involved in all of this. Donald Trump's presidency, presidency was a danger to the Obama legacy and the, the invisible state or the deep state that Obama and Clinton had worked so hard and so long to form. I told you a few weeks ago that little, little uh, known names would start to go down for this. They're going to be the ones that pay for all of this. We, uh, we're going to see the people, the Steve Soma, uh, Stefan Halper, all of these people. You're going to see these guys charged with the real crimes. But don't forget, at the very top of this, with as much evidence, Obama, Biden, Comey, Brennan, Rice, all of them, they're being protected. And I'm not even sure if uh, Shiraj isn't part of the protection plan. I don't uh, hold a lot of trust for him, seeing that he was advising Mitt Romney. Um, you know, I'm not sure that he's not on the same page uh, as many of these people were, but uh, you can take him at his word until he proves himself to be unreliable. But his story makes sense. But what's really important is, is to look at everything through the context of what I just shared with you and what you know. I just had a family conference call yesterday. And I told, I told my family that um, these are unusual times and not to believe anything, even what I tell you, just on its face. Don't believe anything from the media, even if that media is me. Make sure you do your own homework.